But while we have suggested that the uh, the pass was on Michael Andretti, the officials report that the pass really occurred on car five, and that's Raul Boisel. Remember last year it happened uh, to Boisel, Paul, and now it's happening to Mansell and, of course, Eddie Cheever. You know, another thing, I notice all the cars as they come through turn two here, they're going a little bit slower. I think we're entering that point in the race where everything is a little bit slippery in the turn. I watch the guys are more conservative, running a little bit closer to the grass. And we have reconfirmed with the United States Auto Club officials that the black flag was for passing Raul Boisel, both Cheever and Nigel Mansell. It's interesting that Boisel is now benefiting from penalties to Cheever and Mansell. As you pointed out, Bobby, last year, of course, it was Boisel who had two penalties. We're past the 100-mile mark now. As back in the field, you're on board with Raul Boisel. Robbie Gordon is lined up just behind him. This is a battle for fourth place. You can almost watch his steering wheel as he goes through the corners, Paul, and he's really handling good. He's not pushing, and he's not loose. You can watch a good, steady amount of pressure. Watch what he rolls in to the turn here. Good, steady pressure on the hand. No quick corrections. Out close to the wall, very smooth. Bobby, I talked to Raul right before the start of the race, and he said that he was happy, everything was perfect, he had no problems, and he was looking for a good race. This is terrific from Robbie Gordon's car. Now, look just ahead. There's Raul Boisel just ahead. So we'll track this battle from fifth place on board with Robbie Gordon. Now, look at the different groove he's, he's taken. Now, he's down not even to the white line, Paul. He's been high down here in two turns all day. He's been trying to make his own groove. Now, he's been in the pits adjusting the car, but we can watch him as we go around what he does compared to the rest. And you can see he is just edging closer and closer to him. Robbie Gordon, a young 25-year-old, drove for A.J. Foyt last year, made the switch to Derek Walker. He has matured a lot. He is willing to drive a tactical, somewhat conservative race, which he was not a year ago. Robbie Gordon on the backstretch. Now, guys, let's just sit and watch and listen to Robbie Gordon as he tries to reel in Boisel. and closer to Raul Boisel. Now they've changed the way they assess penalties here from last year. Let's watch here as there's some traffic ahead and both of them have to string through that. Look Raul Boisel, way. he goes a little inside, Danny. And look at that, he can go. I've never seen anybody today run around the outside like Robbie is. I just that is started, total confidence there. Danny, I just started to mention he's got to try to pass him on the outside. Whoa, look, look at this! Look, look at this! Unbelievable shot. Unbelievable shot. Into the first turn, they were drag racing. Now we're looking back from Bozell's car. Whoa, what an unbelievable view. Gordon lost speed with that outside pass, and Bozell, he looked at it as if he'd been blown off, but he came back. Well, here is the Valvoline race summary. For those of you who entered in the Valvoline Indy 500 giveaway, the leader after 50 laps was Emerson Fittipaldi. Stay tuned for the results at the end of the race. Remember, we've had three cautions here today. Thus far, six cars are out of the race. There they are. You know, Paul, the first thing you think about when you watch Robbie going around Bozell on the outside is, is he really woke him up? Because no driver would expect that at this time of the race. All right, now we were talking about how they're assessing the black flag penalties this year, Jack Aroot. Well, Paul, what happened for Nigel Mansell is his infraction occurred under the yellow flag, but they will not assess penalties anymore under yellow flag conditions. So some 10 laps, 15 laps later, they brought Mansell in under green flag conditions to assess the penalty as Lynn St. James makes her way back out on the racetrack. But Mansell is extremely upset. It seems like the crew is trying to calm him down right now on the radio because it was so long from when he had the infraction before they gave him the black flag stop and go. 
And of course, part of the reasoning there is the complaint last year was that if you assess a, a stop and go penalty under the under the yellow, well, it's really no penalty. Look at Gordon, and there's Boisel to the inside. Whoa! Oh, now watch. Now watch this. Now this is terrific. Yeah, but what happened was that Bozell was slowed going into the corner, and that's 230 miles an hour. They almost touching. And we Gordon had nowhere to go, Bobby, because there was a car to his right. That's why it was so close. Sam, he was really worried about it. The wall on the right, Bozell on the left. That's a bad position to be in. Mauricio Guzman just inside of Teo Fabi and John Andretti there. Andretti runs in third place, so he's overhauling some slower traffic. Fittipaldi is the leader. Unser Jr. runs in second. We watch Bozell and Gordon. Gordon's around him again. But he didn't have the car on the outside to block him. What a great move. This He's got total confidence out there. And I think we're going to see him passing cars all day long there. Danny, we've never seen passing like here this early in the race. Don't you agree? Absolutely. He's got the car set up just perfect. And he shows he just can pass anybody wherever he wants to go. You know, most of the drivers that fell, because of the track being narrowed down, can't run the apron anymore, that the cars don't pass on the turn. But it, we know now they do. Bobby Rahal comes in, makes a stop this is under green and one would assume not scheduled well, Bobby the other thing about that pass and the only guy that we're seeing making those passes is Robbie Gordon here's Ari Leyendijk in so we may be coming up on scheduled passes under green flag for example Leyendijk made his last stop on lap 22 so it looks like these cars are thirsty once again John Andretti, boy, what a story. When he's done here at Indianapolis, it's off to Charlotte Motor Speedway for another 600 miles of racing in a stock car. Let's go to Jack Aroot. Well, Scott Goodyear, you're out of the race. What does this do for your mindset for the rest of the IndyCar season? Well, it's been tough this month. There's no doubt about it. Everybody in the Budweiser team has given it all. But, uh, you know, you, you put so much emotion and so much heart into this deal. It's just, uh, it's been draining this month. See him in a week, Paul, at Milwaukee. You see Robbie Gordon just a second ago as the car gave a pretty good twitch. He caught it, kept going. Paul, well, just a quick deal on John Andretti. You know, when he finishes 500 miles here and is looking at another long race in Charlotte, that's going to really be tough. The only rest he's going to have is on the airplane getting there. That's really going to be bad. And, Bobby, if this race runs long, he planned for this race to be three hours and ten minutes the way last year's was, but this race is running much slower than last year's race, so he's going to have a very little envelope there. Jerry Punch, an update on John. Exactly, talking about his tough schedule. In fact, they have done some calculations here in the John Andretti pit, and this race has to average 150 miles per hour for him to be able to make it to Charlotte to run the 600. And right now, it is going to be very, very close if this race stays under 150 mile per hour average. Averaging 139.7 now. John Andretti, the 33 car, is 24.1 seconds behind the leader of the race. There is Raul Boisel. Black flag is now out for Scott Sharp. Bobby, one other thing I'd like to say about John. The hardest part is, of course, that the mental drain that you get from running in the Indianapolis 500 really takes its toll. And now to turn on again and go do a 600-miler at Charlotte is going to be awful difficult. Yeah, Danny, and these drivers live this race for about three days after it's over. So it's going to be harder from that standpoint, too. The blue and white car that we're watching here coming by on the inside, Jack Villeneuve. You see him making a terrific pass. John That's Andretti. the highest placed rookie in the field. He has just moved into third place. Son of Gilles Villeneuve, the great French-Canadian driver who was killed in Formula One in 1982, as we see little Al headed for the pits. This should be a routine stop as well, but remember, he stalled on his last stop. He runs in second place. Yeah, but Bobby and Sam and Paul, I don't think we're going to see him stall again. He did it once. I don't think we're going to see it again. Roger radioed some instructions to him about getting out of the pit. Well, Danny, I don't think we're going to see the same problem because Roger Penske did counsel all the drivers about trying to keep their revs up just a little bit more when they take off. He comes awfully close, and he does again! What was that? He's got it refired again, but he, he actually rolling forward is what saved him. Now, Emerson Fittipaldi comes down in the pit road for a Penske tandem here. Let's oh, see, yeah? no changes. 
and no changes on Al Jr.'s car. They are going to make no changes on Emerson Fittipaldi's car either. But the big question mark is with this new Mercedes, are they going to be able to exit the pits without stalling? Let's yeah. listen. You know, Jack, these two cars are set up an awful lot different aerodynamics. I talked to Emma and the little Al last night. One of them's going, Emma's going with light down force. Little Al is going with heavy down force. I think Penske has more confidence of his cars on the track than he does in the pits. There's Jack Vilnap again, running in third right now. Now, but with those stops, Jack Vilnap moves to the front of the field. And Jack Aroot, both times the Penske cars came out of the pits, there was an unusual sound. What was it? Paul, it beats me. I think it may be just the sound of the Mercedes engine as it starts to come up. Now, remember, when we listened to the sound of Al Jr., he literally stalled the car, but the rolling momentum, he had enough forethought to be able to keep going and disengage the clutch. It caught at the last minute. He fired it up, and he left. Jack Vilnap leading the race reminds me, this is a rookie, and back in 1983, a rookie, Teo Fabi, also led much of the early stage of the Indy 500. The crew chiefs were the same. The man's name is Barry Green. He's masterminding this rookie's run today. Well, Jacques Villeneuve picked up the lead of the race only as he crossed over the line and was scored at the last lap, but he did not catch Fittipaldi. Fittipaldi was coming out of the pits, but Jacques Villeneuve appears to be the leader. We're going to check scoring because there seems to be a question. Is it Villeneuve or is it Emerson Fittipaldi? We'll be back. is a Goodyear Aquatread with a 60,000 mile warranty and this is a bucket of water. At highway speeds, Goodyear Aquatread pumps away over a gallon of water every second thanks to its deep groove aqua channel. Over a gallon a second, that's 396 gallons per mile. Think about it, the next time it's pouring, buckets. The all season Aquatread, only from Goodyear. We say the best tires in the world have Goodyear written all over them. expect a $40,000 luxury sedan to be tested like this to some of the most rigorous standards of quality in some of the most advanced laboratories in the world but the fact is at Chevrolet we don't make any $40,000 luxury sedans we just test them that way that's what makes a car a genuine Chevrolet At the end of the day, more top mechanics in America choose one motor oil over any other brand to help keep their own cars running longer. Valvoline motor oil. People who know use Valvoline. One shot. That's all it takes for weeds. Roundup. I love steak, especially a, a thick, juicy T-bone. A1 all over the top. Perfect. Wonderful. I'm in the mood for something spicy. Tongue-tingling spicy. Spice is just... They get you here, and it gets you right here. I want something with gumption. Something with a peppery kick that's spicy. A1 Bold. Yeah, that's what I'm in the mood for. Original A1 and new A1 Bold. They're how steak is done. Athlete's foot. It's a predator made up of many types of fungus that eat your feet alive. You can't just cure some of them. You need a weapon to kill all of them. Lotrimin AF, full prescription strength medicine, the brand doctors recommend most. Lotrimin AF is so powerful, it doesn't just kill some causes, it kills them all. Now in spray and powder, new forms, same killer results. Lotrimin AF, the killer cure. Our country's top gymnasts meet the best from China and Belarus in the Hilton Gymnastics Challenge. Plus the Advil Mini Marathon, Saturday on ABC's Wide World of Sports. We're back at Indianapolis where Jacques Villeneuve has made his pit stop, taking him out of the lead. And right now he's trying to hang on to the leader lap. That's Fittipaldi that's lined up just behind him. Fittipaldi trying to get around him. Of course, the big story here is he wants to get around because he puts him down a lap. That way, he wouldn't have to worry about him. You take the look back. We're looking for Raul Boisel, who has a second-place car. 
a long interval and there he is as Raul slows down to come into the pits everybody making stops under green one of those who made a stop was John Andretti who stalled it as he tried to come out of the pits but then got going but it dropped John down to 13th position so those stalls have been very costly today and now Raul Boisel heads for Jackaroot the Dick Simon crew beginning to go to work. They're going to try and do it as methodically as possible. Raul Boisel, the last report, Paul, was he may be encountering some radio problems. So far, the stop is going just as expected. Let's listen. Now, the one thing, Paul, you can notice there, he kept the revs up. You could hear the engine was much higher in 15.8 seconds. So Raul Boisel is in and out. Danny Sullivan, that's quite a balance that they have to achieve there when they come out of the pits because that clutch is very small and pretty easy to burn out, isn't it? Well, that's right, and you got pretty tall gears in these things. You just want to get them going. You don't want to spin them too much. You'll heat up the tires too fast. You'll take some rubber off them, and you don't want to abuse that clutch. You just, remember, you got to make maybe nine or ten stops during the day. You need it a lot later. So at Indianapolis, the Mercedes are back in front of the field again. Fittipaldi and Allenser Jr. Chuck Villeneuve has dropped to third place. Jimmy Vassar is fourth. Bobby Rahal fifth. Scott Brayton sixth. Nigel Mansell is seventh. Eighth is Michael Andretti. And here is that ongoing battle between Gordon and Bozell. Boy, they love to fight with one another. This time he passed him on the inside. I'll bet you Bozell thought he was going to do the outside again, Bo. Well, I think, too, Bobby, I don't believe he was really up to speed enough. You know, he just come out of the pits, and Raul had done a couple of laps on his tires. He was probably a little faster. Let's go to Jack Aroot. Well, Paul, let's show you what they did with Raul Boisel's car. They said they changed the stagger. Now, we'll take you back through what stagger means. That's the circumference on the outside tire and on the inside tire. If you have more circumference on the outside, the car will automatically turn left. What they did on Raul Boisel's car is they closed up the stagger. That means they lessens the difference between the two circumferences to try and make it handle better. And what that means is they want the rear end a little bit tighter and the front end to push a little bit more. See, the track, of course, is changing from moment to moment, too. Every time the driver comes out of the pits, he has a full fuel load. The car feels different than when he was out there last. And as the day wears on, rubber gets in the groove. The, uh, the way the, tra the car handles on the track changes. Now here's something to consider. This car, Raul Boisel, ran six laps, 15 miles longer than the Mercedes between stops. As Bobby Rahal moves around Jimmy Vassar and picks up fourth place. So Rahal working his way steadily toward the front. Paul, he's gone through a lot already today with those accidents happening just in front of him. I'm sure he's very pleased and the thing's going according to plan. Danny, don't you sometimes feel when you survive a couple of accidents early on, it's almost like it's your day. We heard that Bobby Rahal had a strange feeling about this race, that something special and good might happen to him after all the problems he's had in qualifying the last two years. Sam, you're absolutely right, especially when you dodged a few bullets like that and made a great move across the grass. Everything's feeling pretty good. And if this guy who's struggled all month long just to get in the show is now running up in the top five, he's looking good. Gary, down to you. Adrian Fernandez, one of the nine rookies in this race. Tell us about this day, the conditions, your first experience at Indianapolis. Well, it's just a Saturday for us. Uh, the Tecatle and the Quaker State team with Gallus Racing and all the mechanics have done a great job with the car. The car was working really great, and uh, it was those days, you know, this day was not to mean for us, and uh, I had a, a, a blown tire, I think, in one of the, one of the accidents. Every accident was happening just right in front of me, and uh, it just happened, and I just couldn't get it uh, to the pits with the tire blown. It just spun me out and stole the engine. Well, his first experience, not a pleasant one. We'll see you again next week, Milwaukee. Thank you. Paul? So the Penske cars, Mercedes-Benz powered, run first and second, Emerson Fittipaldi, and 14 seconds back, Allenser Jr. And then the fastest rookie in the field, Jacques Villeneuve, and then Bobby Rahal. We'll return with more of the Indianapolis 500 after this message and a word from our ABC stations. I love steak, especially a, a thick, juicy T-bone. A1 all over the top. Perfect. Wonderful. I'm in the mood for something spicy. 
tongue-tingling spicy. Spice is just... They get you here, and they get you right here. I want something with gumption. Something with a peppery kick that's spicy. A1 Bold, yeah, that's what I'm in the mood for. Original A1 and new A1 Bold, they're how steak is done. You know which motor oil can help keep your car running for 100, 200, 300,000 miles and more? It's the same brand that more top mechanics in America use in their own cars. Valvoline motor oil. People who know use Valvoline. For this guy, any deodorant will do. But these guys need Speed Stick, antiperspirant that gives 110%. And now Speed Stick deodorant has a powerful new formula to fight odor. Speed Stick, for movers and shakers, the number one, the only one. Monday, this is something you must see. Guns and violence through kids' eyes. Two bullets went into my brother and he died. What you hear will shock you, move you. You'll never feel the same again. Forrest Sawyer, day one, Monday. The good news about shopping Chicago's famous Magnificent Mile is that you can walk from one great store to the next. The bad news about shopping Chicago's famous Magnificent Mile is that you can walk from one great store to the next. Chicago is easy to do. Call for a free visitor's guide. Right now, you can have all the value and safety of a Geo Prism, complete with driver and passenger airbags, AM, FM, stereo, and more for only $177 a month. $177 a month. Right now, you can get a fun new Geo Tracker convertible and get 1,000 cash back or 4.8 financing plus up to $500 first time buyer allowance, which adds up to a lot of fun per dollar. Get to know Geo at your Michiana Chevy Geo dealer. Congratulations, WSJV, on your 40th anniversary. Back in Indianapolis, Al Unser Jr. there runs in second place. Nigel Mansell sitting just ahead of him trying to keep from going down a lap. Currently runs in seventh position. The leader of the race is Emerson Fittipaldi. So the Penske cars continue their dominance here. The Mercedes-Benz has actually led between Al Unser Jr. and Emerson Fittipaldi all but two laps of this Indianapolis 500. Now, let's take a look at the Valvoline running order after 74 laps with Fittipaldi Unser Jr. at the top. We'll look down through the entire field here. We're averaging 155 miles an hour, so not anywhere near a record, and that's dropping off fairly quickly. One car that just stopped was Michael Andretti. He, of course, is out of sequence, as he had to come in after that restart to change tires because he had a tire going flat. The overall race pace is slower this year, Paul, but the speed on the track is faster. Emerson Fittipaldi has been 220 his fastest lap, and his top speed was 244 on the straight. That's fast. Other people that we are tracking, Lynn St. James, of course, spent a long time in the pits and currently runs 26. Let's go down to Jerry Punch. Dominic Dobson, your seventh Indy start was a short one here today. What happened out there? Well, it sure was. It was disappointing because uh, the PacWest Columbia helicopter car was running well. We were poised to get up into the top ten. And I just passed Hideshu uh, Matsuda and was trying to get by Mike Groff. And I think something happened and we just uh, both spun and hit the wall. I don't know if we touched each other or someone uh, said he may have blown a tire. I haven't seen the tape, so I can't honestly say. But it was a short end and, and a, a very... Uh, a discouraging way to get put out of the Indy 500. You seem to be okay, but you spoke with Mike Groff inside the hospital? I did speak with Mike. He's okay. He's a little banged up, and uh, I'm sure he's upset, just like I am, but, you know, this is racing, and uh, this track is very difficult to pass on. The groove is narrow, and it's just almost impossible for two cars to go side by side. Good news for Groff and Dobson. Both going to be okay, guys. Gary, what a gentleman Dominic Dobson is. He could easily have laid the blame at the feet of uh, Mike Groff and didn't. He reported his condition is instead. That's terrific. And also, one of the things that I like to hear there, and he would have said it, I don't think that they made contact. He said, I couldn't feel it. That means if they did, it was so light. It was very, very light. And uh, that's a good sign, too. That's good guys racing very close together. Yeah, you know, Danny, sometimes the excitement causes you to forget because we can see smoke between the tires. 
Well, that's true, but was it when they just touched and Groff started to lose or not? But it was a good sign that they uh, they both have the respect for each other, and I don't think anybody was trying to do anything wrong there. Let's get an update on Scott Brayton's run now. Here's Gary Gerald. Well, Paul, very quiet, quietly, he's been in pretty impressive run today. The drama, of course, with his teammate Cheever in the black flag after Eddie had gotten up to third, put him way back. Brayton runs sixth. John Menard says the car's working beautifully. They did put a little more wing in it on the last pit stop for a little better bite. Also, we understand that Nigel Mansell's having a bit of difficulty, the boost fluctuating, going up and down. So his woes continue. In fact, Scott Brayton is in the middle of a good little battle to watch. He's got Jimmy Vassar just ahead of him, and Nigel closing on him from behind. So let's keep track of this, which is an ongoing battle for fifth place if you count Jimmy Vassar's position. Well, you can watch Nigel Mansell going down the straightaway, grafting, grafting, trying to get a run, whipping out going into the turn right at the last minute. Now, that's something the Mercedes have not had problems with. They don't have to draft that much. They just whip out like this and go by. Vassar is the car, the blue and white car on the left that Mansell just ripped by. And do you think that he remembers that move around that pass around the outside going into turn one that Lion Dyke did on him last year? Because he repeated that on Scott Brayton. You know, it's been fascinating to watch Brayton, too, again in the yellow 59 car because his line here has been so unusual. Look at Nigel Mansell, though, as he ducks under John Paul Jr. Vassar chases, and there is Michael. An interesting thing about Brayton, with Mario withdrawing from the race, Brayton becomes the most experienced driver in this race. He's run more Indy 500s than anyone else, 13. Well, based on the line he's been following, I'd say he has a good chance of saving that car and having it fresh and ready to run at the end. I think Scott Brayton is a guy that has really learned how to drive this race. He had bad luck the last couple of years, but I think he was ready for a major success, and maybe it's going to happen today. You know, Absolutely. Sam and Paul, even though the racetrack might be a little bit slippery in the groove right now, I've been noticing down here there really is no dust like on the outside, which is making it real nice for passing. Nigel Mansell trying to close on Ray Hall. We mentioned that Dick Simon as an owner has six cars in this race. Let's consider what they are doing here today. In ninth, Bosell, Masuda runs in 11th. Batolo, despite his spin, is 23rd. Mashushta, 24th. Lynn St. James, she had a lot of trouble in the pits. He's 26th. Marco Greco, 27th. Bobby, have you noticed, too, that Mansell seems to be going through traffic a lot easier than Little Al who was catching him, but little Al doesn't seem to have as easy of time getting through the traffic, even with that Mercedes power. Well, Danny, I've watched them all slow down. They've been, their speeds are down around 210. Little Al's a little less than that. I think if this is that deal in the middle of the race where everybody's doing a lot of thinking, kind of a dead time for the drivers because they're trying to figure out for what they're gonna do later. I'm sure you can remember thinking and doing the same things. Oh, absolutely. At this time of the race, you're trying to, what calls am I going to make? Do I need to put some wing in it, take some wing out? What set of tires do I want more stagger? And just try to get through the traffic as uh, best as I possibly can. You know, the personality of race drivers also is, is that Emil goes fast all the time. He's just like a switch, on and off, whereas little Al's going to do a little bit more thinking, I think. Oh, he's Ray Hall makes a turn for the pit area. So Ray Hall coming in now. You're on the nose of the car. Now let's take you back while Bobby Rahal makes a stop. We'll continue to track this, let you know if anything changes. Let's go back to lap to 23. And this is the situation that developed in the pits that brought out a black flag for two competitors, Cheever and Mansell. Car five is the key. Raul Boisel as he comes out. Now you see the blend line just down below the car. There comes Mansell. You can watch him correct with the steering there. The rear wheel that's spinning like that. And there's Cheever. So Mansell and Cheever after the blend line. Now what they should have done was gotten back behind Bozell. They didn't do it. 
And so the black flag came out for both of them. Frustrating for both because Bosell pitted so far to the end of the pits was barely up to speed when they arrived. They would, both of them, have had to break hard to avoid passing Bosell. Well, they could, but if they had corrected themselves, Sam, they probably wouldn't have made the call. They don't expect you to lock them up, but if they had slowed down, let Bozell go back in the in front of them, they probably would have not made that call. Once they were on the track, that's an option, correct? On the track or even in the even in the pit lane. Yeah. Well, what kind of a difference would it have made for a guy like Nigel Mansell, who now runs, now runs in third? Could he have been the leader of the race as he tries to over, overhaul Dennis Vitolo here? Not a battle for position. Let's go down to the pits once again. Paul, strolling the pits is Leo Mel, the director of competition for Goodyear. Leo, we talked early about the fact that it was going to be a hot day, that there might be concerns over tire temperatures. What have your preliminary readings been on these early stops? Well, the Penske team scrubbed in the tires very carefully last week. Ran them one day, let them rest, ran them the next day, and it's all paying off because everything looks great so far. No blisters, no trouble areas showing up. No, uh, the, the, the Eagles are just perfect so far. All right, well, here's a happy man. Of course, he's still got half a race yet to go, Paul. Mansell really working the traffic. You notice uh, drafting everybody. Little Al is now coming into the pits. Al Unser Jr. in second place. The and the big question, Paul, routine, Jack. And the big question is, will he stall it this time? We'll keep you abreast. Waiting for the leader to come in as well, Emerson Fittipaldi. Scott Brayton is also in the pits, and Emerson Fittipaldi is on the pit road. He kept the revs up a lot higher, Paul, than it was 14.8 as Emerson Fittipaldi comes in. Now, neither of the team cars are anticipating making any major changes that bodes well they seem to be pleased with the fuel consumption as well right now it's just a simple stroll in the park jack when you talk about changes of course we're seeing them change tires you mean changes to the handling of the car via the wings and there the chassis been, that's right sam there have been no wicker bill adjustments no wing adjustments etc so the leader is first and second in and out of the pits and that time in and out smoothly as there has been a faulty I'd like to say one thing, too, to Jack, being a driver, even when the cars are great, there's never a stroll in the park. There's always a problem. The handling is uh, always a factor. You're always trying to adjust. You've all got little problems that you're dealing with constantly throughout that drive. The thing that's, the thing that's fascinating, Paul, right now, and Danny alluded to it, is Emerson has complained just a little bit throughout the course of the race about understeer, but when they offer to try and fix it, he says, no, leave it the way it is. Well, Jack, that could be, don't forget, they run through an entire s a tank of gas. That thing holds 40 gallons. So at the beginning, he might have more understeer or the car might be more neutral. He might not want to change it because it'll upset the balance at a different part of the run. And he might be happy enough because he's just out there, as you say, in the lead. Coming up Saturday on ABC's Wide World of Sports, our country's top gymnast, including Dominique Dawes, take on China and Belarus in the Hilton Gymnastic Challenge. Plus, the Advil Mini Marathon from New York City, Saturday at 4.30, 3.30 Central on ABC's one, Wide Paul. World of Sports. A crash, Bobby. Crash down in turn one. One car. One car, that's Against all the wall, it is. Down to the inside. The crews are already there. The rest of the field slows. There is some debris up on the track. Masuda. Hideshi Masuda, the first rookie to qualify, first car to go out in qualification. I just happened to be looking up, Paul, at the track. Is this happened? It looked like he just lost the rear end coming off. Spun, hit the wall. Doesn't look like it was all that bad. Blue, the blimp spirit overhead with that shot. There's the replay. Lost it coming off at turn one, slammed the wall, and then just slid down to the inside. But again, look at all that trash that flies off the track around there. We got to watch for flat tires from the other cars. That's the biggest fear that they have. Bobby, how much trash is down in that area as we look at another replay of this accident? Really doesn't look that bad. Guys, sorry to interrupt you. We got another one up here in turn three. We have another accident in turn three. This is an accident after the yellow? Yes. They're down here. It might have been that debris that we're talking about. He might have lost a tire. And that's John Paul Jr. 
there's a flat tire that you can see. Most likely, that doesn't mean it was caused by the debris, but, but uh, Danny's probably right. They run over debris, they have a flat tire that's going to the next turn, and wow, we the car just takes off. Well, Bobby, that's exactly why I ask you, because it, and look uh -oh. at this. Paul Tracy. Smoke Paul out of the Tracy. Mercedes of Paul Tracy. Now, Tracy was back in 13th place. He was not probably positioned to win the race. But this could be the first weakness shown by the Mercedes program. All right, let's go back. We'll keep track of Tracy. Here is the car 45, the John Paul situation. Boy, oh, lost it way early. That almost uh, definitely confirms that Danny saw. What's this? What's this? There's Mansell. Nigel Mansell under. Unbelievable. Nigel Marco Mansell and Chris. Dennis Vitolo. Why? How did they There's get to this point? An unbelievable After the situation. Yellow. What is going The yellow light's been on for several laps. That's this was on the pit road. That's but interesting that Mansell and I think Al Jr. were the first guys through were the first guys through the uh, accident. Maybe they picked up a puncture too. Yeah. Nigel, Nigel Mansell decides to get out because there was fire on the back of the car. And, and remember, this is methanol that's burning, and you can't see it. Sam, that's, that's uh, oil that's burning right there, not methanol, and you could see it. It's right underneath the engine there. Yeah, but what about Mansell? One of the firemen saw something and I, went to just totally envelop Mansell. Maybe he thought that Mansell was on fire or saw some of those flames that we can't see from methanol. Bobby, I saw the oil fire, but then so suddenly Mansell seemed to leap forward as if something else. That's why I suppose that maybe the methanol had ignited. That's because everybody is screaming fire. He wasn't in a hurry until everybody started screaming. And he also knows the methanol fires are almost invisible, Sam. Well, but yep. Bobby, he is on the ground. Bobby, it's it not also an easy climb been, out. It could have been, too, if his radiator was punctured. Don't forget that'll take time till it seeps into the back of the cockpit, and he could have all of a sudden got the hot water. Which so feels through. like fire, right? Exactly. Yep. And maybe burns worse. It's not very often we see one car on top of the other. This is really a terrible-looking possible accident there. On the warm-up lane, and first. we still have no idea how these two cars, Vitolo and Mansell, got there well after the yellow. Let's get an update from Gary in the Mansell pit. I'll tell you, Paul, this team is devastated down here because they were elated when that initial yellow came out. They were going back on the lead lap. They were right back in the race. Then suddenly, Linkly after the yellow, here's the problem for Mansell. They have ridden the roller coaster right to the bottom of the pit right now. Well, Gary, remember, the Newman Haas team has never managed to win Indy, and they've been competitive year after year since they started in 1993, 83. I'm worried about Nigel Mansell. He is in great discomfort there. Nigel and Jacques Villeneuve were both about to make up a lap, taking advantage of the yellow that came out. And then this happened, and we still don't have a clear understanding of why it happened. I think, obviously, Paul, that he got hurt in the accident. He was just sitting there for a while, hoping that somebody would come helping out, help him out, and then he either felt that hot water that Danny was talking about, or somebody was hollering fire, and boy, he got out, no matter how much pain he had. Bobby, your heart just goes out to Nigel, who's been hurt so often in racing one way or another. That bad accident at Phoenix last year, which he bravely overcame to finish third here in this race, and now this. Well, let's take a look at Nigel Mansell's in-car. Maybe that'll give us an idea of what happened here. The yellow light is on. Emergency equipment is on the track. First time we're all seeing it. This is turn one. And he's suddenly hit. And we're waiting. That was the camera going out. There's the nothing camera wrong with the stopped. Set. We're still watching the tape because there is where the camera comes back. And he gets hit from behind. That's what it looks like. We'll still ride with this videotape from Nigel Mansell's camera. Mansell's still sitting over. there. Go ahead, Danny. His head's laid over a little bit to the left. I don't understand that. Yeah, could he was be dazed? Here's the smoke. Fire oh. starting in the back of the car. That's the oil smoke. It's from Dennis Bartolo's car, though, I believe. There's a little oil dripping down. You could see that. That's why it was burning with a yellow flame. Nigel takes off the steering wheel so that he can get out. Now he's slow. And See, I think the water or something came through there, and all of a sudden he realized he was getting burned. There's See, the water. Out. The water's spitting out. That's from the radiator, I believe, of either his car or somebody else's. 
Also from the fire extinguishers. Here's Michael Andretti's onboard camera. Maybe we can get a view from this camera the same situation. No, that's really John Paul Jr. That was John Paul Jr., the first spin under the yellow. Now that's one that you would just have to say that was a tire puncture because the car just went out of control immediately. Now the driver's fault. Because the amazing part, Bobby, is that nobody's really going fast. I've never seen so many accidents, severe accidents, under a yellow. Danny, you it's like... remember, the rear end is one solid axle from right to left. If you have a tire goes flat, the other one keeps driving the car. There's the other accident right there. All right, let's review what's happened here at Indianapolis. Masuda had an accident. They turned on the yellow light. Apparently, John Paul Jr. drove through the debris of the accident, and straight away later, he had an accident. And then during that yellow, Nigel Mansell was hit from behind by Dennis Vitolo, or apparently hit from behind. So we are still under yellow here at Indianapolis as we approach the halfway point, our 100 laps of the Indianapolis 500 with Mercedes-Benz 1 and 2. We've won more races in the history of Trans Am. We've won more races in the history of NASCAR. Fact is, we've won more races over the last 30 years than any other automotive company. Have a nice day. Splitfire earned a United States patent. Splitfire doesn't look like any other spark plug. And the patented Splitfire doesn't work like any other spark plug. Five extra horsepower by merely installing these plugs. Quicker in the quarter mile. A 4.8% gain in mileage. There's nothing like a Splitfire. You'll get more power and more mileage. Or your money back. Get the guaranteed Splitfire advantage at leading automotive stores from coast to coast. This is a Goodyear Aquatread with a 60,000 mile warranty, and this is a bucket of water. At highway speeds, Goodyear Aquatread pumps away over a gallon of water every second, thanks to its deep groove aqua channel. Over a gallon a second, that's 396 gallons per mile. Think about it, the next time it's pouring, buckets. The all season Aquatread, only from Goodyear. We say the best tires in the world have Goodyear written all over them. I love to work on the cars, uh, and I still work on the cars. There's not one part of the race car that I cannot put together myself. I can drive it pretty good, too. A top-notch mechanic reaches back and picks a tool out of his toolbox. He can tell right then if it's got the quality or not. 1,600 Craftsman hand tools, made in America, guaranteed forever. If any tool was ever made better, it'd have to be made by Craftsman. Only at Sears. Hello from Plank Road, where our man Paul has gotten lots of calls and letters asking, is ice beer really beer frozen like ice? Nope. Paul says that would be beer on a stick, not an ice beer. Ice House is ice beer. Ice brewed so there's never any watered down taste, just more of what you want in a beer. Ice brewed Ice House. It's not frozen, but you can sample a frosty cold one almost anywhere. Thanks and enjoy. The 78th Indianapolis 500. This ABC Sports exclusive brought to you by Goodyear, number one in tires. Speed Stick Deodorant and Speed Stick Antiperspirant, the number one for movers and shakers. Chevrolet, one car company has won more NASCAR races over the last 10 years. Genuine Chevrolet. And A1 Steak Sauce. A1, it's how steak is done. Live shots from the Blimp Spirit, 204 feet long. It's cruising over the speedway at 30 miles an hour. Let's go down to the track once again. Gary Gerald. Well, Paul Tracy has just climbed out of his Mercedes-Benz Ilmore, and uh, I know this is a huge disappointment, and you had to chase some early problems when it died in the pits early. Yeah, we had a problem when we left the pits. It was crowded, and I didn't want to get it out there in the middle of the lane, and I stalled it, and then we couldn't get it started, and it, that put us back, so we are just chipping away, moving up, moving up, moving up.
up and then we uh something wrong with the turbo we had a turbo fire so it's uh disappointing that the marlboro car is not out there because i you know i think for sure we could have finished in the top six or seven where we were at because people were starting to drop out give us an assessment now of this mercedes power plant and its future knowing of course that it's a one-shot deal this year here at indy well it's hard to say i know al and uh and Emerson are running good. Their cars were working good in traffic. Uh, I, I couldn't get through the traffic as well as they could. But, uh, you know, ult ultimately I was being really careful. But, uh, you know, obviously we've, I hope hope we can bring it home in first, maybe first and second, but it's disappointing I'm not out there. Thank you, Paul. Paul. So Paul Tracy out of the race. We'll take a look at the Valvoline lap leaders with Al Unser Jr. leading in the early going. Fittipaldi the leader now. Now when you buy a case of quality Valvoline motor oil, you can send away for a Valvoline t-shirt. Honey, can you pick up some milk? Okay. And become a member of the Valvoline performance team. Hey, Join the Valvoline performance you team and you'll feel like you're right in the middle of the action. So buy a case and get a shirt, plus great deals on Valvoline racing gear and a lot more. Honey, did you get the milk? People who know, use Valvoline. With Minwax Polyurethane, you can do more than admire your wood. You can live with it, too, because Minwax contains pure urethane oil to protect wood while giving it beauty you can really live with. Minwax keeps wood beautiful. For this guy, any deodorant will do, but these guys need Speed Stick, antiperspirant that gives 110%. And now Speed Stick deodorant has a powerful new formula to fight odor. Speed Stick, for movers and shakers, the number one, the only one. This is the planet Earth. popular line of sport utility vehicles on the planet. <laughs> Chevrolet. Ow! Lots of gasolines talk performance, but no gasoline delivers it to more drivers than Shell. Shell, the world's best-selling gasoline. Friday, July 1st at theaters everywhere. Betsy King, Patty Sheehan, Nancy Lopez, and Brandi Burton. Four of the best in women's golf play the JCPenney LPGA Skins game next on ABC. Next Sunday here on ABC Sports, we'll head back to the racetrack as the Indy cars roll into Milwaukee, Wisconsin for the Miller Genuine Draft 200. Our coverage begins at 4 Eastern, 3 Central and Pacific next Sunday here on ABC. And there is Emerson Fittipaldi. He is a leader of the race as we are approaching the halfway point. In fact, as they cross the line this time, it will be the 250th mile and the green flag. Al Hunter Jr. rides in second in third place now. On the leader lap is Jacques Villeneuve. Green is out. Here we go. The second half of the Indy 500 is underway. When Emerson Fittipaldi came here a couple of weeks ago for the first days of practice, he had just been a pallbearer at Ayrton Senna's funeral. He was obviously shaken the first day he practiced. He just bedded in a few brakes and tires. The next day he came back and has been extremely focused ever since. Emerson Fittipaldi has put everything but the driving of this race out of his mind for two straight weeks, and look at the result. Now, Sam, when you saw all those cars going by at the start, you saw all that paper on the track. Often, that gets up in the radiators. Happens often after a yellow flag like that. 
Sam something else, too, that Emerson told me, something he's never done before. He went back home to Florida for a couple of days last week just to get away from everything and just kind of regroup. And I think he's been focused all this year. Exactly. He used to rent a house here at the Speedway and stay throughout the whole month. But this year, he's concentrated on the racing. As we track Scott Brayton and Michael Andretti in their battle for fifth, Raul Boisel heads down into the pit, so that certainly is untimed, unscheduled, and ill-timed. This could mean trouble for Raul Boisel, who runs 10th right now. We'll watch it for just a second here. Is Boisel destined to be one of the bridesmaids of Indy like Michael Andretti oh. and Roberto Guerrero? They Some guys it. are wonderful here, but they can never win the race. So Raul Boisel, he's got himself a serious problem there as the rear calling comes off. Nigel Mansell, remember in that incident on our fourth yellow, Jerry Punch is down with Paul Newman, one of the owners of that team. And Paul, you've just been inside the hospital. What's the update on Nigel Mansell? Well, he's okay. There's no burns, and uh, I guess he's pretty angry, though. Uh, he's just getting exit lane, and someone just ran right into him on the yellow. So. Has he been able to talk to Dennis Vitolo to find out exactly what may have happened? I have no idea, no. Okay, Paul Newman just exiting the hospital. Fortunately, the good news, Nigel Mansell not burned and appears to be okay. Let's go to Gary Gerald. And up near the north end of the pits, Marco Greco, another of the rookies from Brazil, out of the race, mechanical engine problems. How about your first experience, Marco? I know you're disappointed, but it had to be a great thrill. Well, it was a great experience. We, we got the 94 car on Friday, so we practiced with the 94 car. I got to the engineer on Sunday morning, and we put the car on the field. Crew did a great job, and I, I was really happy. Uh, unfortunately, during the race, uh, things can happen, and uh, we had a, a bad valve. But I was really happy to be here, and uh, I look forward for next year to be back. We look forward to seeing you as we go to Jackaroo. Well, Gary, a problem with Raul Boisel after doing so well in the early going, the engine is overheated. The radiators are just steaming as they've taken the side pods off. It's going to be a long stop for this man. Well, there's what Bobby Unser was suggesting just a few minutes ago, debris on the track. Most race hands, boy, there you got a shot of debris. That looked like heavy debris. And of course, everything just wants to go to the radiators because they designed the cars to suck in the air there. So on board, Michael Andretti. Here is the Valvoline race summary for those of you entered in the Valvoline Indy 500 giveaway. Bobby, Bobby. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's see if we can get to Nigel Mansell. Nigel Mansell, here we go. Yes, sir, no. Jerry, go ahead. Here in the garage, here back in the, at the hospital, Nigel Mansell has come out of the infill care center. Nigel, first of all, are you okay? I don't feel great. I've got a bit of concussion and I've uh, just upset all the medical people because they want me to go to the hospital and I don't. So if they want to take my license away, that's fine with me because I've never seen anything such, such a joke as what we just had out there. We're under yellow for a lap and a half. Someone tries to take my head off. Have you spoken with Dennis Patolo nice to see exactly what, uh, what went on and what happened? Uh, you speak to him. <laughs> Obviously an upset Nigel Mansell holding his right shoulder. And uh, they wanted him to go down to Methodist Hospital for x-rays, but as you heard Nigel say, he would have no part of that. He has climbed in the golf cart, and he and Carl Haas, Paul Newman and company, will head back to Gasoline Alley. Paul? An understatement to suggest that Mansell is furious. Now, let's do the Valvoline race summary. For those of you entered in the Valvoline Indy 500 giveaway, the leader at 100 laps halfway, Emerson Fittipaldi. Stay tuned for the results at the end of the race. Cautions today? Four, counting for 31 laps. But one of those cautions, the last, actually covered one incident under green when, Mas when Masuda got into the wall, and then John Paul after the yellow, and then Vitolo and Nigel Mansell after the yellow. So one yellow flag covering three different incidents. Okay, Paul, you know, I can understand Nigel. First of all, you're out there racing. You're putting everything into it. We've seen a lot of accidents. Everybody's dodged the bullet a little bit. Mansell just missed that accident. 
it, with the Japanese fellow that spun, and now he goes and he's cooling off. He's just driving around. He's on the warm-up lane, and somebody clobbered him. That's not when you expect to have anything happen. You regroup, and it's dangerous enough out there under race speed. I can understand why he's angry, and he doesn't even know why it happened. Danny, do you think that's a prelude to a return to Formula One? He really looked disgusted. Well, you know, with everything going on, you never know with Nigel if he decides that that's a, a reason to get out of it. Things haven't gone well for him this year or as well as he'd like to defending champion. He might just decide this is his chance to exit. Well, you know, my opinion, you two guys is, is that he's a professional. He doesn't think what happened is reasonable, and I don't either, but by the same token, that'll never change his way of thinking. So the answers now need to come from Dennis Vitolo. As soon as he is available, we are going to try to talk with him. We watch Michael Andretti. Scott Brayton is closely pursuing him, trying to close in. There comes Brayton. Because I think we also have to be fair, Paul, to Dennis. We don't know what happened to him to cause him to hit Nigel. He might have something break. He could have had a puncture just like John Paul did. We just don't know what caused that accident. You're absolutely right, and that's why we want to talk to him. So the three cars that matter, Michael Andretti, then the yellow car of Scott Brayton, and then Jimmy Vassar just behind Scott. They are beginning to close in on a battle for fifth. Last year, only four cars were out at half distance. This year, 12 cars out at half distance. A return to the carnage of 1993, but luckily without the injuries, at least so far. You know, we talked at the beginning of the up and down years of Bobby Rahal. Last year was terrible. He didn't even make the race. Right now, he's running in fourth place, and Danny Sullivan, as we look off the front of Ray Hall's car, twice in this race, he has missed being involved in a major incident. Let me tell you, Bobby's having one of those days where luck is shining on him. Everything seems to be happening right in front of him, and he just scoots his way through it and misses all the debris and the damage. And I know he's counting his blessings, but the good part is he's running right behind Eddie Cheever and in front of Al Unser Jr., and nobody's changing position, and Al's not really closing on him. He's running a very strong race, even though he's a lap down. And look at that great run up through the field. Let's go down to the track medical center and Jerry Putch. Unfortunately, this man has seen much of the field today. And Henry Bach, uh, Dr. Bach, what's going on inside the hospital? What's the update? Everybody's been released at this time, Jerry. Uh, Mr. Vitolo, Mr. Matsuda, Mr. Paul have all re been released in good condition. They had some minor bruises, but they've been released uh, in good condition. Uh, Mr. Mansell, uh, our exam was not complete before he walked out the door. I believe you probably spoke to him. So I really have no report on his condition. Nigel said you wanted him to go down to get some x-rays on his shoulder, but uh, he sort of disagreed with that. I was more concerned that he was a little foggy about some things when he came in. I was more concerned he may have a little head injury, but uh, we'll never know that, I guess. Thank you, Hank. I think Nigel Mansell was crystal clear with regard to what he thought happened on the racetrack. All right, here is Bobby Rahal. He runs in fourth place. The leader of the race is Fittipaldi, followed by Al Unser Jr. and Jock Villeneuve. Ray Hall runs in fourth as we look at the last lap average for him. We'll be back with more of the Indianapolis 500 after this message and a word from our ABC station. Zero to 60. Straight versus slow. A demonstration of who Lexus is relentlessly pursuing. The all-new Cadillac Seville SLS with the North Star system. Now with the new power of a smart lead.